Mr. <laughs> Actually, I was going to raise a procedural matter, mm. but I think you have given that chance. Uh, just requesting the minister mm. to put this on record. We have just had a recent parliamentary sitting, and the speaker gave conditions that he, the minister of education can only come here if we fulfill the conditions required to come because she's a first lady. So we are requesting you as a minister to tell my fellow minister to tell us the conditions she needs to be fulfilled here so that parliament, actually for us as a committee, if it needs her to come alone, the, the whole parliament will not be there, but the committee of education will get all those requirements so that you don't come here to meet a full minister when you're a minister of state. <laughs> Higher education. So no, kindly, no, 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 it's no, no, no. a request, to Honourable Minister, fr from the Minister of Education, shadowing the other one, who is not seen. <laughs> Thank you. That is easy to answer. That's now your interpret. The Honourable Minister, the, we have a very, very brief uh, presentation uh, on the bill. Um, and the introduction just talks about who we are and how heavily we rely on the teachers whom we call contracted professionals in the management of the affairs of the board. And that we generally, as a board, welcome this bill because this bill now, in our view, puts the teaching profession at par with the other professions like the medical, the legal, and so on. We, we have only two or three observations to make, uh, Honorable Chair and Members. Under Section 660 uh, on the general offenses. Mr. Dong, are you utilizing that microphone? Because Honorable Vinji, I can, I can observe, is not, uh, so you try to be slightly audible. OK, Chair. Um, I was saying, Honorable Chair and Members, that we made observations under Section 60 of the draft of the bill on the general offenses. It has created offenses uh, on different aspects. Mainly, we'll see that it is on teacher registration. Honorable Chair, what's, what we note is missing is a provision on offenses of teachers participating in examination malpractice. Mm. <clears throat> we therefore strongly advocate, Honorable Chair, that this section should include offenses related to misconduct by teachers in relation to examination malpractice. I think Mr. Babuka, you have heard. You had not looked at those ones who are really tampering with our harvest of knowledge. So those ones must be, they sh you sh should start from them. And Chair, we have the justification, mm. uh, which we have listed under A, the B, C, and um, on the other, on, on page, on page two. Uh, under D, we also observe that the conduct of assessment and examinations, both uh, school-based or internal and the national, must be a responsibility of teachers. As it is, Honorable Chair, we get asked as UNEB by heads of schools to get paid when they conduct UCE, PLE, UAC examinations because they say these are examinations by UNEB. However, we want to note that assessment is part and parcel of a teacher's um, activity and so we would like this responsibility to be succinctly spelled out in the bill so that teachers know that it is their responsibility to teach and conduct assessments, whether these assessments are internal or they are a national examination. Under E, uh, Honorable Chair and Members, we note, of course, that the UNEP Act 2021 also provides for exam malpractice as a statutory offense. However, we have had cases where, because investigations 
of a particular case have been done badly and the case goes to court and then the judicial officer hearing the case may dismiss this case on a technicality. The situation now is that such a teacher who indeed committed that offense but has been let off the hook on a technicality goes scot-free when the victims of their acts, like the children whose results would have been cancelled, would be suffering. And therefore, we propose that under Section 53 um, on the disciplinary hearing that this bill should also have something to do with teachers of this kind whose cases may be dismissed on flimsy or technical grounds. This does not amount to double jeopardy because whereas the UNEB Act uh, would be prosecuting a criminal offense, this is not a criminal offense. I mean, this is not criminal proceedings and therefore, in our opinion, it will not amount to double jeopardy. Okay. Honorable Chair, those are the uh, observations and the recommendations that we make uh, to be included um, in, this, in this bill. Our prayer, Honorable Chair, is that uh, the committee considers our submissions and have them incorporated in, in this bill. I submit, Chair. Okay, thank you very much, Junior. And uh, members of the committee, uh, yes, as you observed, uh, Honorable Chair, you never had been before <coughs> this committee during the budgeting process, and um, there were areas that were raised by UNEP in con connection with the implementation and assessment of the, the new uh, lower secondary curriculum and other matters. The requests by UNEP to get extra resources to be able to train the teachers uh, to retool the markers to mark the new curriculum because the approach is completely different. The field management of the examinations themselves the marking or scoring, and also the conduct of the transitional examination uh, chair, as you and honorable members will remember, uh, the board had made a provision to run another parallel examination to take care of those who would have liked to repeat but cannot do so in the new curriculum because they sat in 2023 and before uh, under the old uh, defunct uh, curriculum. And honorable chair and members, you'll also recall that uh, UNEB was granted these uh, resources and the omnibus cut that you referred to uh, indeed removed all the provisions. Honorable Chair and members, uh, this posed an extremely big challenge to the board, and uh, the board brought this to the attention of the First Lady and Minister of Education and Sports. So, Dr. Uh, Waguma, can you allow the Minister and the Permanent Secretary to to Ministry Ineb? of Education and Sports? Honorable Chair and members, I am happy to report to you that on the 4th of this month, 4th of September, the First Lady and Minister of Education and Sports called a meeting uh, with the Permanent Secretary and Secretary to the Treasury, the Permanent Secretary acting at that time, the Ministry of Education and Sports and UNEB, during which UNEB again made a presentation on the dire consequences of UNEB not being given these resources. 
after that presentation and our discussions, uh, it was agreed and the Permanent Secretary, Secretary to Treasury, made a commitment that the issues that we never raised were too important to be ignored and that resources would be found to ensure that the programs that the board had put in place to administer the 2024 examinations uh, succeeded, the four examinations including the transitional examinations. UNEV was advised to write to the Ministry of Finance to ask for front loading of money which is already on its uh, budget so that the activities that had been suspended from July, for example, the training of the teachers, the retooling of examiners to be able to mark the new examinations for senior four could take place. Honorable Chair and members, the board did that. And uh, as I speak now, um, 10.5 billion shillings has been front loaded and availed to the board. And because of this, uh, the essential training on the new lower curriculum, uh, secondary curriculum, that had been suspended in July has resumed. The teachers who are supposed to mark the new examinations have been retooled and also training of new examiners for the Uganda Advanced Certificate of Education, that is the A-level, that could not take place in August has been rescheduled for December before the uh, marking of that examination in January 2025. Uh, Honorable Chair and members, it is our contention that um, as per the commitment made by the Permanent Secretary and Secretary of the Treasury, that resources would be found to enable UNEB to conduct the 2024 new examinations and the transitional examinations and the other two examinations, the primary and the A-level, whose candidates have all significantly increased uh, that these the resources would be found. So at this point, uh, I am confident, honorable chair and members, that these resources will be found and, and that the board will be able to conduct these examinations. Some of the activities, of course, should have been done a little earlier. They have been delayed, but we are saying better late than never, particularly the training that the teachers needed so much for the continuous assessment, the project work, and so on and so forth. Uh, that we believe that these resources will be found and that we will be able to conduct this year's examination successfully. Chair. Okay, thank you very much. I think that is the good news. One of our members, you have. Which our next top management is going to consider. Yes. And then we'll, we'll, after that, we will be in position to share with you. But otherwise, the sharing it out here before the top management addresses itself on, on the issues they are raising in here, I think it will be premature. Okay. I just want to pray that you give us time. Okay. We go to the, the, the pre, make a presentation to top management for consideration, then we come back to you. So what we wanted to express is the urgency of the matter. The urgency of the matter. It is a question that it, there is a meeting through curriculum and had her own answers. How your NEB is going to determine them whether to go to A level or not. So it is a serious matter out there. And when we went to the village, some other teachers were really up in arms and really blaming. So let's hope. Chair, Chair, we are aware and we are working around that. Yes. Let, let's hope it is tackled as, a, as an urgent matter. 